General's Cry, contrary to popular belief, is just as strong as ever in the 3.14 Ultimatum League patch. We've just got to throw Blade Flurry out the window. This build will still make GGG's balanced team cry, almost as much as we will be. Welcome, it's your friendly neighbourhood Badger here. GGG thought they could nerf me, but they thought Blade Flurry was the problem. This is Perforate. What? Now, jokes aside, today we are focusing on a Champion League starter, so the damage from the Berserker you just saw there is almost unachievable on Champion, but it goes to show that scaling this build is still so overpowered. Alongside new gems coming such as Petrified Blood, we can still juice this build up to immense power. Now, if you've seen my previous General Scry build, you might have noticed that it was all damage, no defense. Today, I've decided to reserve myself a bit to bring you a much more balanced version updated to 3.14 entirely on Champion. The main reason for Champion is a small change to how low life works that makes it extremely easy for us to keep permanent uptime on Adrenaline through first to strike, last to fall, using a small instant life flask. This allows instant recovery above 50% or low life to then be lowered below by any single hit from anywhere or any cast of a spell. Genius, right? Given the nature of these strange interactions, I spent way too long on Path of Building figuring everything out, but it should be all together now. What we are left with is a budget and endgame version of this build that will decimate bosses. If you're looking to rush into the endgame, this is the build for you. The gameplay you're seeing below is of my previous Berserker version, which, as I stated before, has much more damage and is less survivable. It's just there to showcase how the build mainly functions. I think we will just jump into it, but before we do, once again, the handy color bar below is all you're going to need to jump to specific sections to check out everything. So, let's just do it. All right, to start off, we are going to be talking about the budget version of this build. Now, I'm going to be including two different path of buildings down below, one for the budget and one for the end game, just because the tree's a bit different. Uh, some use different cluster jewels. It just made the most sense to have two different path of buildings uh, to kind of open up and have a look at here. Now, on this, uh, there, this is like a fairly budget, uh, and I'm going to be talking about some options as well if you can't quite get exactly what's happening here. But this will function very easily uh, just on on pretty basic gear. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So we're gonna start with the gear. As you can see over here, the damage is fairly nice. It does say the DPS is 4 million, but uh, the skill cooldown is uh, zero, uh, Sorry, 1.91 seconds. So it's closer to around like 2.3, 2.4 million, just uh, for how many times the perf rate's gonna happen there. So it's not that high, uh, but for a budget, it's still extremely good for boss killing. We do start with a very, very, very cheap weapon and easily achievable weapon, which is a Skaver. Now, Skaver is really nice because we can get three green sockets on the Skaver and then get uh, uh, basically 30 global crit multi here. And then it just gives a good amount of damage. It's, it's like a 300 DPS weapon, but any sort of rare sword as well works totally fine. Uh, it's totally nice. Now, uh, obviously the best in slot for our uh, offhand is Red Blade Banner. This basically means that every time that we walk right, no matter where we are, we will be summoning our generals. Uh, now this is super 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 strong and before this point um, you can still play the build It's just not going to feel as strong and you're only going to be able to summon uh, the uh, Generals themselves when you're near enemies. However, it's still going to be uh, Totally fine to do so. I would recommend uh, starting just like kind of maybe even self-casting perforate could be totally fine Just in the uh, early game or even something like blade storm is totally good as well uh, um, You don't really need to switch much uh, if you're gonna be using generals cry or not Red Blade Banner is just kind of like, if you get this, you're definitely using General's Cry. Moving on to the rest of the gear, it is pretty much just life and resistances, as you can see here. Got a little bit of physical damage to attacks if you can get it on your gauntlets themselves. Uh, but the amulet I like best in slot is Hyrie's Truth. Now, this is really, really nice to uh, sort out here. And with the reservation and uh, our mana and everything like that here as well, Hyrie's Truth with the 50% less mana reservation of precision, means it's very easy to get that capped hit chance and a lot of crit chance as well right there, which is super nice. 
Now, rings themselves, these are the only things that I wouldn't say are fully budget, because they are steel rings, and they do have some uh, physical damage to attacks on them. But basically, all you're looking to do, if you can get a steel ring, or even just an iron ring, or a resistance ring, and just slam on uh, any of, like, tier 3, tier 2, or tier 1 physical damage essences, uh, just try and slam and get some good rings here. Now, it's going to be really easy in the early game to get essences, because it's only 2 chaos on the map device, and essences are basically getting buffed in... Uh, um, in the new 3.14 patch. So it's going to be pretty easy to craft your own rings like this. Now, Steel Ring, obviously, uh, they are level 80 drops, so you're not going to be getting them probably on day one, but uh, you can do Iron Rings or you can do Resistance Rings. That's totally fine as well. Uh, now, the belt itself, I've got a Stygian Vise just with Life and Resistances and an Eye Jewel just with some uh, physical damage to Sword Attacks here, but any sort of Leather Belt will be totally fine. You're not going to be losing too much there as well. The... Flasks themselves are pretty interesting. The normal kind of things are like a diamond flask, a quicksilver flask. Using a lion's roar for some damage and even an overflowing chalice just to keep uh, all of our other flasks up. I really like to use this one. The interesting one is a seething small life flask of staunching. Now this small life flask, and if it doesn't quite work with a small life flask, maybe a medium life flask, is actually to bring us above petrified blood. As you can see over here, we've got 52% uh, unreserved life and we're only going to be using 50% of that life. Uh, and we'll talk about petrified blood in a moment and how that actually works. Like, why are you reserving 50% of your life? Don't worry too much. It's totally fine. But this basically puts us right above the low life threshold to then be right underneath once again to proc adrenaline from champion extremely easily. So that's why we've got this one here. And it's kind of a uh, an instant life flask to remove bleeding as well if we ever need to. And then lastly, we've just got a medium cluster jewel with Haunting Shout and Lead by example. So Haunting Shout is just making that uh, enemies taunted by your war cries are intimidated, which is actually, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I did a little bit of an oversight here. Uh, you're already getting intimidation through the adrenaline node in Champion, so you don't need to worry too much about that modifier, but the good one is lead by example. When you war cry, you and nearby allies gain onslaught for four seconds. That's extremely strong right there, lead by example. Then just uh, basically some crimson uh, jewels around with crit strike multi and crit strike chance maybe and some life. And then the last thing that I really, really, really recommend is Disciple of Katava. Every second, consume a nearby corpse to recover 5% of life and mana. So you do get 10% more damage taken if you haven't consumed a corpse recently, but we're always consuming corpses uh, with uh, our General's Cry and Cycloning putting Desecrate down as well right there. So this is an easy, easy pickup. Uh, it's usually very easy to find. Might not be day one, but day two, day three, super, super nice. All right. Now, let's move on to the skills themselves on the budget version. All right. Now, first of all, let's talk about the General's Cry setup itself. As I said, we're talking about Pulverize today, and this is the sixth link. So we've got General's Cry and Pulverize, linked with melee, physical damage, brutality, impale, and perforate. These are all really nice. If uh, you're in a five link, just take out melee physical. You won't be using that one. Um, I need to put it back in now, don't I? Silly me. Uh, but yeah, take out that one if you're using a 5-link and put that back in there. Uh, in the weapon itself, we're using a dash and a second wind and then portal there as well, just to keep the three green sockets we want for the scaver. Uh, and in the shield, uh, we can use a dread banner, a blood and sand, and not actually a purity of elements. Now right here, this is where our petrified blood will go. The reason I've put Purity of Elements is just because it's 35% Reservation, which is the same as Petrified Blood. And Petrified Blood is going to be the uh, gem that is going to give you basically 50% life, uh, always on low life there, uh, to make up for the uh, Adrenaline node that we're going to be using. Uh, now, once again, Petrified Blood is basically a gem. I can actually bring it up right over here for you if we jump over to... Uh, one second, there's my script for this uh, for this video. If we have a look at the Petrified Blood, basically, uh, any hit that you take, 40% of that hit, of the life loss, is prevented, and then 76% of it is prevented, uh, that is prevented, is uh, lost over four seconds. So it actually, basically, um, it, it's, uh, it evens out, and you're not actually uh, going to be taking any more damage, uh, really, with Petrified Blood, even though it looks like you're only using 50% of your life, which is pretty crazy right there. Uh, so keep that in mind. Petrified Blood is there to keep our adrenaline up, and we'll talk about adrenaline in the links section, all right? Now, the helmet itself, uh, we've got a Vile Ancestral Warchief, and then we're also putting a Herald of Purity linked to uh, Blood Magic, but it's not actually going to be Blood Magic. It's going to be uh, linked uh, with New Gem Arrogance. 
Uh, arrogance is going to be basically uh, what we're reserving another 48% uh, of our life there as well, uh, just because we're not going to be recovering that with uh, flasks or anything like that as well. Uh, and it just means that we can fit in the Herald of Purity, which is super nice. Uh, and then last in the helmet as well, unlinked, we've just got a flesh and stone sitting there. Now we have uh, calculated uh, for the flesh and stone. Uh, it does say 16% reservation here, but it's actually going to be 6% uh, reservation because flesh and stone is going from 25 to 35%. So don't worry too much there, we have calculated that in. Then in the boots, we've got our Desecrate, our Fortify, cast while channeling Cyclone. This is just going to keep our Fortify up as we're doing everything uh, and spawning our Desecrates. Uh, then we've got a Cast when Damage Taken setup, a Cast when Damage Taken level 3, Molten Shell level 11, Summer Ice Golem level 5, and then an increased duration there as well to keep all of these right there. And then obviously from the Amulet from the Hari's Truth, we've got a level 20, uh, I think 22 Precision, is it? I think it's uh, level 22. Yes, level 22 Precision, uh, with 50% less mana reservation right there. So that's the setup. Uh, once again, uh, if you, you know, can't get a Skaver, then just use any sort of one-handed weapon. If you can't get a Red Blade Banner yet, then maybe even just use like a Terminus S two-hander, just to use Perforate uh, self-cast yourself until you, you, until you do get that Red Blade Banner. Red Blade Banner is easily achievable by farming yourself in a Lighthouse map if you would like to do that, or you can buy it from Trade if you're playing in Trade League. That is pretty much it for the budget gear and links. Let's talk about the end game gear and links now. Oh boy, now it's time to talk about the end game gear and links. Now, as you can see here over on the damage section, this build scales way too well with good gear. Um, uh, Champion is extremely strong, and we went from what, uh, around about 3 million uh, combined, 4 million combined DPS, 3 million to 44 million, so it's about a. Uh, 10, per, uh, uh, 10 times increase right here as well. And mainly, that is through stacking physical damage and Paradoxica. Now, Paradoxica is basically dab uh, doubling all of our damage, or doubling all of the damage that we deal with hits, and Paradoxica is also getting a little bit of a buff in uh, 3.14 due to how Unveiling works. Uh, now, it is an expensive item. I don't know how expensive it's going to be in the new league, uh, but uh, it will be quite expensive. Red Blade Banner is just best in slot. If you want to buy a bunch up and then corrupt them for some other interesting uh, things, you definitely can. But uh, yeah, it is uh, just a best in slot item right there. For the helmet, we're looking just anything with uh, a General's Cry to plus one maximum number of Mirage Warriors and nearby enemies take increased physical damage just on an Elder item. Then you can just get some good life on the helmet there as well. It's not crazy crazy, but it's pretty good. The body armor is a little bit crazier that I like to do here as well, but it's still uh, not that crazy. It's basically uh, max life uh, with increased max life and critical strike chance there. You can even go further with uh, Maven Orbing if you've got a lot of currency or anything like that, but that's uh, uh, what this one is looking like right here. Now, Hands of the High Templar is what I like to choose for the gloves right here, uh, making sure that you at least have vulnerability on hit with the gloves. If you don't have vulnerability on hit, uh, then you can still uh, get like maybe attacks, crit, strike chance, but vulnerability is basically best in slot. I've got basically both of those corruptions, attacks with critical strike chance and vulnerability on hit, uh, and then the other stats as well are just what stats uh, that come with uh, Hands of the High Templar, which is pretty nice. Uh, the boots themselves, we do want boots with Fortify on them. Once again, Elder Boots. Fortify, good move speed, and maybe some life there as well. You can even see on these boots, I don't actually even have life uh, in these, but I probably should. Uh, but you can craft some life on them as well, which is super nice. Amulet, I'm actually sticking with Hyrie's Truth on the amulet, uh, believe it or not. Just because uh, the reservation of precision, having precision in the build is really, really, really good for the accuracy. And Hyrie's Truth is just the best way to keep that in, while still uh, min-maxing all of the reserved mana that we do have everywhere. The rings themselves, we need some good strength and dexterity, or you could switch one of the strength rolls with an intelligence roll. As you can see, we probably need some intelligence, but basically some good physical damage to attacks, life, and channeling skills have negative three to total mana cost right there. It's going to be super nice for us, all right? Uh, then we've got, lastly, best in slot belt, I think, is Rislatha's Coil. If you want some more life, uh, or defenses, I mean, or if you need some more resistances, you can uh, switch this one out. But it's crazy good right here, so definitely use this one. All right. And then, once again, a life flask itself of a medium or small life flask, a seething life flask, an instant life flask of staunching. Diamond flask, quicksilver. The only change to flasks here is a bottled faith we'll be using, and then a lion's roar. And then the uh, Cluster Jewels themselves. We've got a large Cluster Jewel with Furious Assault, Iron Breaker, and Master of the Fundamentals. 
We've then got a medium with uh, Haunting Shout and Mob Mentality. Uh, once again, Haunting Shout is not actually needed, so you can change that one out there. Then we've got a Lead by Example and Provocateur. So you can actually just change the... Uh, you can change the uh, Haunting Shout to a Provocateur to give you even more uh, uh, Critical Strike Multiplier right there as well. Uh, one thing that's very important for the build is a Conqueror's Efficiency, just to give you a little bit less, uh, uh, well, a little bit more reduced mana reserved. Uh, and some reduced mana cost of skills is pretty nice there as well. And then lastly, a Watcher's Eye. If you can get a Precision Pride Watcher's Eye, that's super nice. Uh, you can even get an Impale Watcher's Eye is super, super nice for champion version of this to get more physical damage. Uh, and then uh, if you've just got another slot, you've just got a uh, slot for a nice life cluster with some global crit multi. Uh, not cluster, sorry. Life normal jewel with some global crit multi there as well. That's basically it. As I said, it scales immensely well. And uh, that uh, tech is uh, really, really nice uh, with the uh, adrenaline from champion to be able to get the permanent adrenaline buff. Now let's talk about the skills themselves, all right? So we've got the main Glacial, uh, sorry, not Glacial, the General Scry setup with Awaken Melee Fears, Awaken Brutality, General Scry, Impale, Pulverize, and Perforate. Uh, that's our setup right there. In our main hand weapon, we've got Dash, Second Wind, and Dread Banner. In Gloves, this is where we're putting our Petrified Blood. We've got our Pride. We've got a level 4 Enlighten, which we do need for this version here. Uh, purity of Elements and Blood and Sand. If you don't have the uh, Petrified, uh, sorry, if you don't have uh, level 4 Enlightened, it eh, kind of grinded up, but it's 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 all very min-maxed with all of our unreserved and reserved life here, so level 4 Enlightened is kind of needed for this whole setup here. In the Shield, we're wanting uh, our Herald of Purity and our Arrogance, changing Blood Magic with Arrogance, and our Ancestral Warchief. Boots, we want our Desecrate, Infuse Channeling, Cast While Channeling, and Cyclone, and that's also going to be linked to Fortify there that we will see. Helmet, we're using Molten Shell, Increased Duration, Cast When Damage Taken, and Summon Ice Golem. Uh, is very, very nice there. And then we've got our Vulnerability from our Gloves, and our Precision from our Amulet. Uh, that is pretty much it. We're going to talk about the passive skill trees now, so let's jump over there, and I'm going to talk about exactly what we're going to be choosing in the Champion Ascendancy tree. Let's move on. Passive skill trees. All right, let's talk about this one right here. Now in front of you, you can see the Ascendancy of Champion, and we're gonna be starting with the budget version of the tree, uh, but the Ascendancy is the same uh, between the budget and the end game. Now, it's a bit interesting here. You see we haven't gone for permanent fortify, but that is because we're getting fortified from our cyclone and we're always cycloning. Uh, then we're going, obviously, Master of Metal into Unstoppable Hero, first to strike, last to fall, and then Inspirational. Now, Inspirational is really needed to basically uh, keep our uh, reserved banner um, or, uh, yeah, our dread banner basically not reserving any of our mana. We get some good move speed here as well. Uh, actually, no, they removed the move speed from this uh, node, so never mind that. But we do get uh, increased effect of auras from our skills and we get some regeneration when we put our banners down, uh, which is super nice. Now, some people would say, why don't you take Conqueror and then you, you, know, you don't have to worry about accuracy. But we can easily get our accuracy uh, with our Hyrie's Truth Amulet, which is super nice. So we don't really need this node right here as well. Now, first to strike, last to fall. Once again, I will talk about exactly how this works. Basically, it says you gain adrenaline for 20 seconds when you reach low life if you don't have adrenaline. Now, low life is now 50%. So what this means uh, is when you uh, reach low life, when you reach 50%, you gain adrenaline, which is 100% increased damage, 25% increased attack, cast, and move speed and 10% additional fizz damage reduction. Um, and uh, you do also permanently intimidate enemies that are on full life with your hits as well, which you'll be doing with your Cyclone, which is really nice. Uh, and that life fast to bring us just above 50 to then bring us right back down to 50 is going to mean every time Adrenaline goes off, pop that life flask, doo -doo, and that Adrenaline procs once again right there, which is super nice. For the tree itself, it's fairly self-explanatory. We come out of the Jeweler section, we pick up some life, get a shield node, and then down into here. Uh, we pick up some Fortify, pick up some Crit once we start doing that, and some Life and a Jewel Node right there. And we want to make sure that we pick up Champion of the Cores right here as well. Uh, we've then got the Life Nodes, we've then got the Call to Arms for our General's Cry Instant, and some more uh, uh, War Cry Nodes right here. And our Cluster Jewel setup of our very easy lead by example, and uh, I would say Provocateur right here, with our Disciple of Katava sitting right at the end there. Then got some Sword Nodes once you do sp start specializing in Swords. Uh, some Warcry nodes, some more crit up here, and then just coming right out and picking up the rest of the life here. 
Now, there will be a uh, leveling tree right down over here that you can just select uh, all the points, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, which is really nice right there. Uh, so I'll be including all of that. Uh, but that is pretty much it for the tree itself. If you've got any questions whatsoever, uh, come and join us on stream. You can ask me questions there, or you can come over to our Discord or leave a comment down below. But let's talk about the end game version of the tree. All right, time to quickly talk about the end game version. Not much has changed from the uh, base version, from the budget version. The ascendancy points are staying all the same themselves because that's very important for the reservation. And once again, coming out of Duelist, coming here and getting another cluster set up, but it's a more of a large cluster set up here. Got some more sword nodes, got the crit and fortify nodes through here, and obviously picking up our call to arms, and the more notable nodes uh, for Warcrys as well, which is natural authority and escalation, uh, and then picking the crit up here. And the rest is pretty much the same. You've just got your life, you've got some accuracy, uh, all coming through here, and some more sword nodes over here. So that is pretty much it. I don't really have to say too much. Uh, if you want to follow the leveling uh, version, go into the uh, budget version of this uh, skill tree and you'll get the 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 right there. But it's a very, very, very simple. I don't really need to talk much. I'm kind of sitting here like, anything else I really need to talk about for the uh, end game version, but not really. Very easily followable right here, and this is how you're gonna probably be getting the most scaling. Obviously, you can drop some damage for some more life if you need to, but that's, uh, that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly talk about the leveling, and then we're going to finish up. For leveling, we're going to welcome back our wonderful friend, Zizarin. Now, I did actually just uh, basically say for you to go and uh, check out uh, one of Zizarin's videos, which I will leave a link down below in this video. I, I said that in the last General Scribe uh, build video, but it nothing really changes here. This leveling guide uh, from Zizarin is very comprehensive. He basically does a whole playthrough of it all, uh, and he talks about everything that he's doing. And I would say that this is probably the best way to level the character before you do start the uh, getting that Red Blade banner or that Skaver. Uh, this is probably the best way. Now, he goes through some slams. He goes through some uh, steel skills as well and everything like that. It's all on Duelist. You can follow it really easily. Uh, but that's that's all I really have to say with this build. Uh, Zizarin's going to give you more information than I am going to be able to, and uh, comprehensively. And I do like to share the love between content creators as well, so go and check out Zizarin for the leveling uh, of this build, and then uh, transition when you do get that Red Blade banner. All right. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. I hope this has maybe convinced you to start this build, and if not, maybe it's going to be your second, third build. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget... To leave that uh, lovely subscribe if you do enjoy this kind of content and like this build guide. Thanks for coming everyone, and until next time, Badger, out.